I appreciate your call. Yeah, man. You take care. Have a good one. Zorro. What's happening, Zorro? Hey, I was kind of like trolling you in the chat because I wanted to go to the gym and you had the other guy on for so long. (laughs) I'm sorry, Zorro. What's going on, man? Anyway, um, I know it's like weird how many, you know, how many progressives I have to reach out to because, you know, I I oppose the Syrian war, even though I am more of a conservative. Yeah. And, you know, I think I think, you know, there's a number of avenues where, you know, People have to re- reach out and we agree converge. on certain things. Yeah, we converge. That, I don't think we're as, as separate as, as as the media makes us out to be. So in in all the research I've been doing for, I mean, I did send you the Mattis file a while ago, and I'm still working on more more related to that. If you did get a chance to read it, let me know. Okay. Um, but what what we're what we're dealing with here in Ohio and I hate to do this I really can't stand the guy but I had to do a video earlier this week defending Dennis Kucinich what for all did you yeah, now for go all, for it go ahead go ahead go ahead I want to hear it <laughs> yeah the, the, go ahead. Dennis Kucinich they're trying to paint him as some sort of Russian yes, Syrian hybrid you know uh, meta Godzilla or something yeah and it's it's just it's wrong. I mean, you can you can I personally I'm not going to vote for him. Uh, yeah. I I think he is the true expression of of uh, a lot of the he's a lefty. policies of the progressive camp. Yeah, he's a lefty. Yeah. So, but you know, to call him a Russian agent, I think is is pure propaganda. And I went and I researched it. I went to the FEC website, mm-hmm. and the same person that they accuse him of taking donations from. On the who's a pro Syrian gave donations to Ro Khanna and to Kamala, Kamala Harris. Wow! In past oh. election cycles, <laughs> and, that, and, and Kucinich himself had alleged that he gave some to Ted Strickland, who used to be, used to be our governor here. But yeah. I couldn't find evidence of that. But you know, it's it's just selective uh, selective outrage, in my it opinion. It's, you know, you can you can disagree with a person and criticize him without making up outright lies and. and That's right exaggerating things that's right now i agree with you man uh, when stuff comes up for trump every so often and i'm like this is nonsense it's like you guys are attacking him on something that's bogus like uh yeah you can oppose something i, I can give a list of things that i don't particularly like trump on but i can also call bs when media is or or somebody else is pushing something that's utter nonsense it's like just because i don't like him doesn't necessarily mean i need to make shit up about it and that's i like that man good damn point. yeah i, I did do uh, the same thing happened like later that that week. Uh, by the way, Tim Canova. I actually, even though I've never been a Democrat, or I guess I was a Democrat before I could vote, but um, Tim Canova, who I actually donated to a couple years ago, I saw the the piece in McClatchy about him also the pipeline being a big Russian plot yeah. and RT sending down you know people you know we we are against pipeline for Tovarish Putin and whatever you know it was. It was just such an awfully researched uh, um, article that they did about uh, Mr. Canova. Who, I, I think he's actually, I, I think if, if I lived in Florida, I might actually vote for the person because, you know, personally, I, there, there's a lot of ecology issues that I think I would agree with him on. Yeah. So I, I like him. Uh, he, he was on the show. He came on for an interview. Um, you know, he ran against Double Walsman Schultz. They destroyed the ballots. Somebody was telling him, it's like, dude, don't just resign and actually try to verify the fact that you've lost that race if you lost the race. And he goes to try to verify the ballots and they tell him the ballots have been destroyed, but we made a copy. And he's like, I don't care about your copy. Where are the ballots themselves? We destroyed those ballots. What do you mean you destroyed those ballots? You've just broken the law. Not just broke the law. It's against the law from the standpoint. If a court, if a case is in court that you can't necessarily destroy evidence when the judge may actually want to see the evidence, they destroyed the ballots themselves in Florida. Canova went to one Democrat after the next trying to get assistance on to say, this is illegal. This is illegal. And they all ignored him. It's amazing. And so Canova said, screw it, I'm done. And he went and he's running now as an independent in Florida. So, so, so that's why I really, I really need help from, you know, creators like you on the left, because there are people that I've interviewed that they would want to interview with you guys about the two DNC delegates regarding the smear about Russian trolls on, on Facebook groups and stuff like that. So, you know, 
please let me know if you're willing to wait, wait, have I, an interview think, with them. So the DNC delegates thing, I think I've, if I'm not mistaken, I may have read that. So this is the people who were saying essentially part of the groups where they were lying about the Russia stuff, where the people in the delegates were saying, um, okay, maybe I'm lying. Do, do you I, have, I have this thing in my head explain? on something that I, I read stuff. For the channel, I'm I'm reading. I have to read so much, like just over the content. So there's stuff that so, I might so read that is darn near blur. It's, so it's possible, but I don't, I don't remember for certain. So I'm going to say no. But but so the DC like delegates thing sounds to familiar to me. I'm sorry, I said it one more time. You have like a couple minutes for me to explain. Yeah, go for it. You're good. So essentially, in in uh, March 2017, Huffington Post's uh, Ryan Grimm, who you ah, probably heard. I remember with. this. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. So he, he, he put out an article citing a person named John Mattis, who I've named this project the Mattis file after him. And wait, wait, John wait. Mattis J just so I'm clear, this is the thing where essentially Ryan Grimm got it wrong. Or did Ryan Grimm get trolled or did Ryan Grimm get essentially suckered into doing this story? I think he got baited and yeah. he, he never he never came clean about it. And I don't know him, so, you know, it's, it's anybody's guess. You know, I can't accuse him directly of of promoting a story that's wrong but um if you do some of some minimal research like i've done into the particulars of that group mm -hmm. uh this guy claimed to be an administrator on the group and he said that there was an avalanche of new people in S september 2016 into this group who were trying to sway bernie sanders voters in california yeah. away from voting for hillary clinton and Apparently, first of all, if you're a Facebook administrator, as you might be, and I, I've been on, on certain groups, mm -hmm. all you have to do is, is deny you know, people that, that request to join, and yeah, then you're yeah, done. Yeah. So, yeah. so there's no problem. I mean, if he was an administrator, he could have solved the problem without any issue. So that, that was the first hole in the story. The second hole in the story, is the, the, or the one that actually did get my attention before I read Ryan Grimm's story, was that in February 2018, this year, when there was this whole indictment of the 13 Russian trolls, which is progressing very nicely if you've been paying attention. <laughs> you know, they're, they're about to throw it out of court. But anyway, Politico it's too stupid. had this reporter it's too named... Stupid. Go ahead. Yeah? yeah, it's too stupid. It's too stupid. Yeah, so, so they, they um, Politico, they had three articles that were basically just badgering Bernie Sanders, who, who again, I would not vote for but I'm, I'm going to be fair to, they were badgering him about allegations within the indictment that people within his campaign had been influenced or something, something, something about, about people, Bernie Sanders, uh, being used for whatever. Yeah. We, nobody knows. So they badgered him and he, he actually claimed, you know, there was somebody who was affiliated with us that warned the Clinton campaign in se September. I so then they this, reached right. this John Mattis and he says, he says, no, nobody, I never worked for the Bernie campaign. Yeah. They never paid me or something. That's right. I and remember then, this article. Yeah, go ahead. So then like a week later, they, they, they reached out to him for a little clarification. He's like, yeah, I reported it, but no thanks to Bernie Sanders. Yeah. I actually reported it. He said he said he reported it to uh, American Bridge 21st Century. Yeah. Now, bo both of us have heard that organization, right? Yeah. So... Don't you think it's a little odd? I mean, especially you, but I mean, both of us have read about Bernie Sanders versus super PACs, and yeah. this is a super PAC run by David Brock. Why would a Bernie Sanders former supporter reach out to a David Brock, David Brock. Brock uh, organization? Super, super PAC. You, you, know? you know, it is bizarre. So I read the article. I did read the Matt Fowl. As you started explaining and all that. Oh, yeah, I remember this. I remember this. Um, so the guy who used to run that yeah. particular organization, you're essentially saying this guy... The guy was somewhat of a hack. He already he already had this kind of Russia stuff before all of this took place, meaning he was somewhat primed to just kind of toe this particular line and not necessarily be the most forthcoming. Meaning he's not the most forthcoming witness that Bernie Sanders groups were inundated with Russian trolls. Um, the guy is somewhat of a Russia folk, or it came across that way. Well, the the evidence is pointing, or at least according to the people that I've talked to in California, mm -hmm. they. They believe that he was an operative of of the super PAC within their um, that's grassroots movement. Fascinating, and, and then Ryan Grimm, and he yeah. he was never, in fact, Jamal. He was never, in fact, according to them, an administrator on that group. Really? Yeah. Wow. I amazing that. Yeah, man. I am perfectly okay with talking to them.
And more than perfectly okay. So, so. Um, I'll I'll copy you on an email to them. I well, haven't been able to hear them from them from the for the past week, maybe because they're all busy. Yeah. But there's three possible, four possible people actually that would talk to you, and uh, do, we're yeah. going to keep researching me and me and a couple other YouTube creators. Um. Because I saw the and, Ryan Grimm uh, article. I think Hard News Network um, showed it, where, where they were doing this. Um, I think it was two articles. When I read articles, yeah, those, I usually... Yeah, I wrote those. Oh, okay. When I do articles, I usually go from, like, link to link. And so it was, like, the first article dealing with, you know, this guy being somewhat, you know, the, this guy is saying that he was part of this Bernie Sanders group. And it's like, was he really part of a Bernie Sanders group? Look at the other stuff that this guy did. This guy seemed to be somewhat of a, you know, off the rails. And then it was the article... Um, Talking about Matt or, or Ryan Grimm, did Ryan Grimm get taken for a ride on this when Ryan Grimm publicized this bit of information, not necessarily checking the source of seeing who this guy actually was that he was he was going after? Yeah, that both of those were fascinating. I had the opportunity to read both of those. I'm going to read read them. And of if, course, but if you I'm look at the guy's actual material, I went to his website, and this is a guy complaining about fake news. So he proudly featured on his website. Uh, you know, news articles that supposedly mention his name. Some of them are from, for example, you know, the New York Times or whatever, but some of them are from like basically local, you know, basically the, the type of paper you, you pick out at a bait shop or something, the OB rag, yeah. which is an it's Ocean Bay, rag. California or something, which I guess is fine. But would you, if you're like a big time journalist or investigative reporter like him, would you feature that on your website? I don't know. I don't know. I, don't I mean, so. I, honestly, I would feature anything that I was in, but that's just me. But but, but if, then, if then I had the, 20 the, other the, top ones, would I feature the smaller ones? Maybe not. I don't know. Yeah, hmm. the, but beyond that, there were ones that were from defunct websites that apparently were never real news websites, like one from <laughs> France called uzoj.com, uh -huh. which, you know, it leads you to, like, basically dead links and whatever. Yeah. So... This is a guy who's trying to tell Americans to scrutinize what fake news is, and and he's featuring these these fly by night news news organizations. Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna keep working on it. We're gonna try to get a little more incriminating evidence on it, Jamal. Yeah. But the I really you know I I appreciate whatever help I can get from people, especially people who are more on the Bernie side of things. I think I think you know obviously. You're not going to get me to support him, but I, I do support the the right of people to have uh, another choice, the yeah. third choice, yeah. you know, I, or, look, or or um, whether you support you know, not Sanders to, or not, not to believe in the two party system. Whether but, you support Sanders or not, if I, I keep saying that it's not, I don't personally, I don't think people are as divided as I think they said we are. That's the first point. The second point, I don't like this Russia nonsense. I think it's dangerous, and I think it's so problematic, and so. I think that this stuff was made out of whole cloth in order to obfuscate the failures of the Democratic Party. That's what I think. That's what I, 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 I think that to my core, until I see something different, I think it's bogus. The people who were propped up in this kind of um, infiltration of the Bernie Sanders campaign, yeah, I wouldn't be shocked at all if, these, if they had some of these people inside of either some kind of Facebook groups or anything. I'll give you an example. When uh, the Utah convention, during the Utah convention, they cheated was it Nevada? I'm sorry. Doing Nevada convention. Nevada, yeah. Yeah, Nevada. They cheated Sanders supporters. I heard about that. Outright cheated them. Like, like literally, Hillary Clinton's people couldn't get up out of bed in the morning, and so they didn't get to the convention in time. And he ended up with a process where Sanders should have had more votes than, than Clinton people. Well, Clinton people turned up and said, we're going to exclude certain delegates from coming into the building. Most of those, the overwhelming majority of those, were Sanders delegates. Then you get into the rally itself, or get into the building itself, and they shut down the debate with a floor call vote when it was clear that the Sanders supporters were louder and there were more of them. Like, it, it was this thing of, um, they just robbed them outright. And, and the Sanders supporters were screaming, pissed off that they did this. And then it's like, we're going to shut down debate? Yeah, flare vote, yeah, yeah, everybody's all, eyes have it. They shut it down. Now, Clinton's camp comes out and says the Bernie Sanders supporters were throwing chairs. The media takes up and says, Sanders supporters throwing chairs. Sanders supporters shouldn't be throwing chairs. I mean, this is horrible. Sanders supporters are throwing chairs. Missing the point that they cheated them. Now, they weren't throwing chairs. There's no video of anybody throwing chairs. But they use the fact of the throwing chairs thing as a way to kind of gut the fact that they cheated 
in that process, outright cheated in the process. And there was video of them cheating in the process. Would I believe, you know, am I shocked to believe that they might have had people in burning groups? So there are people who are claiming to be in burning groups to kind of push this Russian nonsense. I am not. I'm not shocked in the least. I, I, I would, I, pay, I paint this as just politics or everyday politics. And it's sad that it's everyday politics, but I would paint that as everyday politics. Yeah, I have to. I have to agree. I mean, many people are telling you guys to get over 2016, but they oh, they don't get over 2016. The Democrats. I yeah, don't bellyache. I was a Rand Paul supporter. <laughs> you know, I was a Rand Paul supporter. I don't bellyache every day that he's not president. That's, I'd yeah. much rather have him as president. But it's you know, um, the actually the DNC had a hand in that too. They were promoting through their media contacts having. Uh, you know, the chaos candidate, Mr. Trump, yes. as their candidate. Yes, so, they were. You know, and, I, and not just Trump, by the way. Um, what's her name? One of the other Democrats was doing that. If I'm, it wasn't Feinstein. It was another one. Um, oh, what is her name? It's not in Ohio. But the woman was essentially putting out ads for the other Republican candidate because they realized he was the worst candidate. They're doing for Joe Manchin. They're trying to get the clown candidates in West Virginia because they believe that clown oh, uh, Blinkenship. Was, yeah, they think he, Joe Manchin, they think that's the only person Joe Manchin can beat. They do it all over the United States. They want, look, my argument has always been these guys are using batshit crazy Republicans as a political games, as a political tool. So they can say, we're not batshit crazy. And that being the main standard that you use the elected Democrat, that's really fucked up politics though, when you think about it. Whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, the idea that these guys are trying to get batshit crazy candidates just so you'll be forced, almost like with a gun to your head to vote for the Democrat is appalling. That's utterly appalling. Yeah, that is what they're doing. It, it's it's a sad it's a sad state. And you know I'm I'm not crazy about voting for a Republican this year. Yeah. Uh, or you know if 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 it becomes too ridiculous, I might not vote at all. But, yeah. You know the fact the fact is, and you know just one remark I'll I'll leave at this point. But mm -hmm. um, I do want to say concerning the EU, one Excellent. thing. So I, I was a huge supporter of the Brexit, and just one remark. What, what has happened since then when they've affirmed that the EU is trying to build a new army, that uh, yes, what they happened are. with the Catalonia wait, crisis. Wait, 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 put a pin in that. Yes, they are. What's that? No, I said put a pin yeah, in are. that. I don't think people realize that. The EU, so I'm not a fan of Nigel Farage, but I used to enjoy Nigel Farage being in the EU. And Nigel Farage, it kind of made this point like you guys are partially responsible for the Ukrainian thing, with this kind of breakdown in the Ukrainian government. And you guys are talking about building an army and talking about opposing Russia. And Nigel Farage is like, what the fuck is wrong with you people? You guys are, you know, you guys are losing your minds. They're trying to build, yeah, they're talking about building an army. This economic union, supposedly this kind of ever closer economic union of sorts, is now talking about building an army. Go ahead. I, I just, there's certain things I like to put pen in so people can understand what we're talking about. Go ahead. Right. And, and that's why, you know, I, I think I, I was always kind of a fan of, of his, um, of his points. And, and then another thing that happened with Catalonia, who I've interviewed people three times concerning Catalonia. Yeah. When the Catalan people wanted to separate from Spain, the majority of them were very, very pro EU. Mm -hmm. Then when, when, you know, the ballot went, went down, it was just an unofficial more. ballot, but even so, there was all the, the intimidation and, and, um, you know, poli people. police uh, repression against them. Yeah. Did the EU do anything to validate their their right to, you know, f uh, a fair trial Maybe or anything? Not. Not, not really. They they actually took the side of the government. Yes, so I don't believe in the EU as an institution. I think it just shows the the problem of the central responsive to its constituents. Centralized authority. It, it's a little weird. I mean, yeah. it is strange. I mean, you have these unelected people. And then they would argue, well, we were elected by a representative. Fuck, you weren't re elected by the people themselves. You guys, like you have this kind of um, like president and everything else. But these people weren't elected by the people who are in the EU. You know what I mean? It's like the elites decided to elect certain people within the European Union. That's one part by itself. It's, it's, it's centralized authority. And you, you know, it's like anything else when you have centralized authority at a certain point, it gets so diffuse that it's hard for the people who are at the bottom of the scale to actually have any influence at the top. Um, I, I'm not against Brexit. I guess my feeling, I'm, I'm guess I'm agnostic towards this whole thing of Brexit. My concern is for Britain, if I'm being honest. I like Britain. I don't know what it is. I just have this thing in my head where I have this kind of affinity or like for Britain. 
Um, I don't necessarily. Well, yeah, want you're, them an, to you're an Oasis fanatic like me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do like Oasis. Those, those <laughs> I do like Oasis. You just can't really, can't really, you can't resist them. I, I just can't resist the band. Um, and I don't want to take people to take a hit. And Theresa May, I think she's incompetent. With the very least, she has certain priorities. Oh, we think she's incompetent too. Those of us that are Brexit support or people on the right that support Brexit, we think she's incompetent. <laughs> so, you know, you, yeah. you, I mean, again, there's there's weird places where we agree that where you wouldn't think we agree. Yeah, it is. You well, know? I, but that's just it. I, when I saw I grew this channel, I got past that thing of um, I I didn't have that thing in me of okay, we're just going to disagree on all this stuff. I, I I started to realize that people they're dovetail on certain things, like on issues of war. There's going to be a dovetail. I like half of what Ron Paul says, like him. Half of what Ron Paul says, love it. If if I only knew that half of Ron Ron Paul, I would love him to death. I watch Ron Paul when he's on that channel. I can't think of the name of it. He has his own institute. There's certain things that Ron Paul mm -hmm. says when he's talking about war that you would think came directly from a lefty. Like, like it's it's these areas where we converge, and I think we should yell at the top of our lungs on those areas where we converge. So, dude, thank you for coming yeah. on. I appreciate it, man. All right, thank you. I got to go to the gym and work off some of these, uh, one of these chins, but um, I'm going to share this <laughs> with... Um, I'm going to share, I'm going to grab this video. I'm going to share it with the people that I talk to and please, please reply. Let us know when we can have one of these people on Yes, and, um, so. you know, get, Just... get a little more exposure because I think it's, it's very important for you and, and, um, the movement that you're a part of. No, send it, man. I definitely, I definitely want you guys on. I read that file. I was going to do that thing. And for whatever reason, I didn't end up doing it. Um, I even remember highlighting it at certain points of it. Um, as I started stepping through the story. Yeah, That's okay. It. We're all busy people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Send it. Definitely send it. Definitely send it. I would right. love to talk to him. Don't look back in anger. No. <laughs> a lot of people are like, what the hell is he talking about? It's a song. It's a song. It's a song. It's one of their best. Thanks, man. Have a good one. All right. You too. All right.